Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Sonic the Hedgehog here, and we are back for some more of the Maxi Toys videos, and ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to more Let's Play of NES Remix 2 for the Nintendo Wii U eShop downloadable uh, software, as far as I'm concerned. So, last time we did manage to wrap things up with the bonus stages, as far as I can tell, and then let me tell you about the bat though, the bonus catalogue in this game is actually is one of the longest catalogues in the entire NES Remix uh, duology series. Because of this though, Holy macaroni, there are lots of, I mean a lot, of puzzle games to the mix. So, in, in today for this video is the fact that, if you can tell for this point, is the fact that today for this episode in particular, is the fact that we're about to be getting things started with the Rainbow Star runs on some of these stages we have not done yet, throughout the sake of this actual Let's Play. So even then, and if you can tell already that much like the first game is the fact that, well, this is going to be a post-commentary. So because of this though, I like to be able to show you the actual much more better runs on the actual Rainbow Stars run on that specific stages that we've able to actually have not got for the majority of this Let's Play. Because of this though, um... You know, much like the first game, is the fact that I like to able to 100% for almost everything. So even then, though, you probably guys can clearly tell of how I'm going to do for this part. So, as far as stage variety, as far as I'm concerned, that um, obviously we've already managed to able to Rainbow Star for almost every single stage. As well, usually every stage is in, uh, uh, you know, in Remix One catalog, and especially no point in Super Mario Bros. Three. And heck, even with the forms of uh, Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels, and heck, even with the forms of uh, Metroid and uh, Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link, and I think that's as far as I can usually describe about the forms of some of these Rainbow Star runs that I've managed to able to done from the past. So even then, though, there are a couple of exceptions, which there were consist of Super Mario Bros. 2, as you can see right there, aka Super Mario USA in Japan. So even then, though, that, uh, there are four stages we'd like to able to show off for the Rainbow Stars run, because I don't think we actually just managed to able to achieve that from uh, ever since the very beginning of this Let's Play, since about a year ago. So even then, though, I'd like to show those off just in case. So even then, though, these stages are, I would say, stage 2, 4, 5, and 12 at the end. So even then, though, that, uh, for some reason, is that the 12th stage always gives me a hard time for some reason when it comes to getting the actual, uh, Rainbow Star on that specific stage is because, well, it's not so bad in the beginning, but when we get to the very end, though, this is where things get a little bit tricky, even when if you really want to go for, you know, the Rainbow Star's run. Because of this, though, you have to be super uh, precise when it comes to able to toss in the vegetables at wards. So, because of this, though, yeah, it might take you a lot of practice if you manage to able to try to toss it right in front of him for a quicker amount of time. So, even then, though, once you're done with all that, and I believe that pretty much does it for any single of those Rainbow Star runs on, you know, Super Mario Bros. 2, aka Super Mario USA, for those who lived in Japan, which I'm sure many people already know what I'm talking about here. So, next up we have is Kirby's Adventure, and um, as far as the actual stages are concerned, I have not even ra Rainbow Star done. That is, of course, stage 7, 8, and especially number 12. Why is it always stage number 12, though, for some reason? But even then, though, let's just, uh, concentrate on, uh, you know, stage 7, as you can see. It's the fact that we need to make it to the very end of this section right there. Even though, despite the fact that I've already did accidentally just manage to come across into a rainbow star from on off-screen, after my Wii U save data has been corrupted and stuff, so even then, though, I just want to classify for showing you guys, just for the sake of this last play alone. So even then, next up is stage number 8. Now, the first part is not too much of a big of a deal, but the second part, you have to be dead on with that specific, uh, you know, the high jump ability at all times. Because if you manage to able to time it wrong enough, then obviously, and also if you manage to keep on missing some of those uh, weaker spots on, you know, Cracker, as you can see right there, chances are you might accidentally manage to able to actually bypass him, or in this case, so you're not even hitting him directly. So even then, though, definitely a little bit trickier if you really want to go after the Rainbow Stars on that specific stage. But nothing compares to the forms of Stage 12 coming up, which, if you couldn't tell already, is going to be first off against with Meta Knight. So even then, though, that because of that, though, yeah, there's going to be a lot of preparing for the forms of, like, several other mistakes worth noting for. So... Yeah, here's stage 12, speaking of which, and the fact of the matter is that what makes this a little bit tricky is the fact that, well, if you want to achieve the Rainbow Stars on that specific stage, you have to be right on with that specific swing shots. And because of this, though, if you manage to get slightly off to the actual, uh, well, 
if you get several mistakes on certain timing aspects, well, chances are you might as well able to actually get yourself hit a lot. And it, even not to mention, Meta Knight never seemed to able to stay completely still. I understand for the actual challenge, but most of the time, if you really want to hurry things up, even if you really want to get the Rainbow Stars on that particular level, well, chances are you might as well able to actually just to, uh, quickly finish him off for that specific stuff. So, yeah, definitely a little bit trickier, and that pretty much concludes Kirby's Adventure set of challenges. So now we're going to be hopping hop into uh, Dr. Mario right now, which fundamentally, though, I've already just got one... Rainbow Star on specifically in stage 2, but not so much for the rest, because as you can tell already, I'm not exactly a pure master at this game though, because, well, it's a little bit tricky to able to actually get as your timing working over with, and not to mention, don't get me started on the Rainbow Star system, because, well, in order to actually successfully try to go for Rainbow Stars on that specifically for every single Dr. Mario stages, is the fact that you need to be super fast and a little bit more accurate at the same time too. So generally speaking, you probably get the gist of it though. So even then though, yeah, that's uh, you know, stage one as you can see right there. And obviously folks, I'm gonna have to cut out the actual uh, failure attempts for those of you probably wondering, just like the ones and how he does it we actually did recently for uh, you know, the Challenge Road videos on uh, Super Mario Party so far, but of course me and Pinkie Pie will definitely get back into it at some point in the Dream of Likes event this Saturday, and especially noticeable for the final day for Super Mario Party, which is going to be on this Sunday. So even then, now, once that's been done, then, well, I can assure you, we can able to, I can able to actually concentrate back onto this game, and especially noticeable with... Uh, well, specifically with the forms of Kingdom Hearts Final Mix at some point, so even then, though, generally you get the gist of it, though, so even then, though, yeah, this is the only time I'm gonna be able to actually just uh, make a mistake from, but even then, though, until later on, though, I might actually get a little bit of a more of a mistakes like this, but then again, it's just because I'm not exactly a pure master when it comes to Dr. Mario game itself, but even then, though, it's just a little bit of a coincidence, most likely, so because of this, though, yeah, it's just a little bit of a more of a, well, timing aspect, as far as I'm... It's hard to really describe about certain stuff like this, but most of the time, it just gets a little bit more of a, well, coincidence, most likely. So, because of this, though, yeah, you probably get the idea for that, how the fact that with uh, Dr. Mario's skills as much as I do, but, uh... Now, originally, I was gonna able to actually go through Warrior's Woods after Dr. Mario, but even then, though, for this point, guys, if you couldn't tell for the actual footage of the length of the video so far, um, it might not take nearly as long as the forms of how it does it on NES Remix 1, surprisingly, because, at least in Re NES Remix 1, that, uh, Mario did manage to able to actually just to do, like, some sort of lengths of, uh, some of these Rainbow Star runs, but turns out in NES Remix 2, well, there aren't any that much of parts to begin with, because, well, if you can tell already, because we've already just managed to come across into several of those, uh, Rainbow Stars, and Dream likes to have been forms of several parts throughout this last play offers us to. So even then, I really do appreciate about the fact that I managed to be able to actually just to show you guys a singular video of the Rainbow Star run. So because of this though, it doesn't take nearly as long as the forms of how it does it on the first game, regrettably, because compared to the first game, they did manage to offer us to able to give you a little bit of a mini clip tutorial if you really want to jump in, but in the forms of NES Remix 2, they do not include the actual video clip on the actual start of the actual each catalog. So even then, though, I do appreciate about that specific stuff, and, um... That's as far as I can tell, and plus as far as I can tell for this point too, I feel like the uh, the game selection in uh, NES Remix 2 is significantly better than the forms of how it does it on the first game in my opinion, just because, well, the first game, it's not, it's not too bad or anything when it comes to the actual game selection, it's just that, well, when it comes to the actual uh, sporting games they include, it's like, for instance, uh, you know, golf, and especially noticeable with some other, uh, well, pretty crappy games here and there too, like Cuckoo Land, and especially noticeable with, uh, well, I don't mind Ice Climber to be on here, but with the forms of stiff platforming and what have you, even with the actual stiffest, uh, momentum when it comes to jumping and platforming and stuff, so generally you get the gist of it though, so... Here we go on to stage number 5 here. Thankfully though, we pretty much almost nearly towards the end of Dr. Mario. In fact, for this time for this point folks, although it won't be nearly the final time we're going to be seeing Dr. Mario injuring the actual gameplay until the forms of uh, 
the next uh, two videos up ahead. So even then, though, because of this, though, at this point, we are slow, surely we're going to be able to gain pretty close towards the end for this point, folks. Especially noticeable because of how the fact that, well, I can't believe that most of these videos, especially noticeable on that very, very, very lengthy um, episode ever since Dreamer likes to vend on, uh, you know, on Monday, that, um... Well, I just cannot even believe it. It's just been took so long for that stuff. So even then, though, and I, I will admit though right away for this point, folks, I do apologize with the forms of the last episode of this because, well, the previous episode of this Let's Play, because once again, that our uh, old microphone starts to glitch up again. So even then, though, because of this, though, you know, we said this many times before, we're getting super sick of the forms of that specific, uh, uh, stupid, uh, obnoxious, uh, sound chip on that specific microphone itself. Although nothing too, uh, quality-wise, it's okay, but then again, it's just one of those things about the fact that it just gets, always gets to me, even with that specific matter, so... Anyway, so I think that pretty much does it for Dr. Mario's set of stages. But of course, we'll meet up with Dr. Mario once again whenever we get to, I would say, in the bonus stages departments. Because even then, though, we don't have to worry about first and against with, uh, you know, Bodo and Wario, both from Wario's Woods, by the way, from that specific sprite that was based on. And uh, because of that, though, we've already got the Rainbow Stars just to begin with. So even then, though, now let's move on to Punch Out now, which. Um, as far as for my tally points of uh, any single stages that we have not got the rainbow stars from, I would say for about uh, three or four stages. So because of that, I, I was just wanted able to go for that specific stuff. The only time I've got rainbow from, it was actually by the forms of, uh, I would classify for saying uh, stage four and stage six, and especially noticeable in seven. So even then, no. Thankfully though, as far as I can tell from that specific stuff already, is that unlike the ones that Harry does in NES Remix 1, where you know how the fact that Mario did manage to able to actually go for the Rainbow Stars run on the actual like uh, the actual post commentary and stuff, but usually generally speaking, that most of the actual missions themselves in NES Remix 2 go down really really damn fast this time because well I'm pretty sure this is, might be something to do with the informs of a uh, certain amount of stages you have to go through even when you've already did done the Rainbow Stars runs on certain missions from the past so at least even then though at least I do appreciate about that specific stuff but um, for whatever reason I just managed to able to accidentally pause the game for a second because at first I thought I was going to be able to be using the white button to be able to use the uppercut or something like that but uh, that again, it's just a little bit of an odd choice as far as I can usually just trying to think of something like this. So, now let's move on to the final stage for the Rainbow Stars run on Punch-Out. And, uh, basically we need to do a certain amount of, uh, techniques we can do for this particular top guy. So, but then again, uh, if, you, if I'm most able to actually say this for this point, um, I'm actually getting quite used to with the forms of Punch-Out every now and then, even for a couple of practices from my own time, even on the actual uh, NES Classic Mini that is usually built in with the actual system, well, usually as far as I can tell from that point, um, I'm actually getting used to with the actual counter-attack or something, because if you most of the time you'll uh, punch well enough, if the actual, uh, one of the opposing, uh, Opponents managed to able to uh, try to attack you or something then basically you can able to actually just manage to make them knock out Super easily and stuff which I honestly do appreciate about that specific strategy I just managed to pull off but even now that's precisely the point So the next uh, stage we're gonna be hitting to or the next game as far as rainbow stars uh, Grinding as far as I'm concerned next up is Kid Igris and as far as I can tell I've managed to able to go for about I would say five stages and um, as far as the other three well, I didn't got that much. So in this first one, we need to go for 110 hearts, and then you have to purchase uh, the Water of Life. Which, if you're lucky, if you're lucky enough, if you manage to let the enemies just manage to able to get close to you, that way you can able to actually grind some more hearts a lot faster. So even then, I generally get the uh, you get the idea with that specific strategy and all that stuff. So yeah, it's a pretty nice little uh, uh, strategy to able to do that. So even then, though, that's as far as I can tell for that stuff. And of course, we're on stage number five, where basically we need to do some, uh, defeating the Reaper section. So because of this, though, well, the first part's not too bad, though, you just have to get by past them. But at first, I was getting a little bit confused by this, because even then, though, for my first experience on this, uh, this particular mission, as you can see right there, at first of all, we're not gonna supposed to able to actually just, uh, well, not get caught or not get spotted by the actual Reaper or something, but it turns out, 
In this particular mission description, as you can see right there, it says, Defeat the Reaper without taking any damage. So, because of this though, I almost thought to myself about the fact that we could have easily escaped from him, but it turns out we do need to defeat him in order to progress. So, sometimes though, the actual mission, uh, descriptions for it almost catch me off guard sometimes, because I keep on thinking of, uh, the first section of that specific stage, but even then, though, it just feels a little bit weird to say that much. Anyway, so now we move on to the final stage in Kid Igress when it comes to the forms of Rainbow Star runs, and that was the forms of the actual boss fights. And let me tell you off the bat though, it does take me a lot of practice, especially noticeable on this God Forsaken Hindrus, which is basically it's like a, you know, a head snake or something, which even then, I've, I always found this, uh, second boss to be a, probably the hardest thing to do, because most of the time my guards or the actual, uh, Slavemans doesn't do anything at all, apart from the fact that, well, it doesn't aim it upwards or downwards or anything like that, but even then, though, luckily for me, I did manage to able to beat the likes out of the, uh, the actual boss itself a little bit quicker or faster, but it doesn't even compare to the forms of Pandora, oh my god, the actual ball projectiles just managed to able to throw me off guard at points. But either way, though, that's as far as I can usually say about this, but apart from that, the side of things, I'm pretty sure enough that I managed to able to finally get myself a, uh, a nice rainbow result. So even then, uh, that's pretty much it for Kid Icarus, uh, game itself, with the forms of the Rainbow Stars runs. Now let's get into the forms of probably, in my honest opinion, one of the weakest games in the entirety of NES Remix 2 in my eyes, and that was the forms of Warrior's Words. Oh my god. Why do I even begin with this game? Well, First of all, I said this countless amount of times from the past, the controls is so damn finicky at times, and plus because of how the fact that I pretty much used to with any other sort of puzzle games for these years, but most of the time it doesn't seem to work for me properly. And there's that 8-bit Luigi just managed to take himself the actual poison mushroom, which again, because of the year of Luigi references and all that stuff, but even then there's a nice little uh, reference as far as I can say for this matter though, but um, yeah, it's just that, um, out of all the actual NES games I managed to play on NES Remix 2, on the other hand, though, oh, god, Warriors Wars give me a lot of hard time on this. It, it, it's nothing awful or anything, it's just that I'm just basically suck at this game, because, well, for one thing, I've said this before, the controls in this game is absolute stiff at times, and especially noticeable how the fact that, well, the game doesn't do a very good job for me to able to teach how things work, well, I do know the actual, uh, main emphasis of this game plays out, like, basically, we need to use the bombs to able to actually get rid of these little, uh, creatures and all that stuff, but most of the time, though, I always keep, keep on getting myself screwed over, and, uh, well, that's as far as I can go for this particular stuff like this. Sure, the presentation is not so bad, though, at least as far as the actual, uh, the final first-party game for the Nintendo's department for the NES game, which reminds me, I was really hoping that Nintendo Switch owners should able to get themselves, uh, SNES remakes, which is essentially just Super Nintendo games, but with mini challenges and all that stuff, so make it a little bit more fun. Well, I don't know exactly for sure just yet, though, mind you, because even then, we haven't exactly got into, uh, the most recent Nintendo Direct yet, so I generally get the gist of it, though, so even then, oh, yeah. So, yeah, for the most part, though, if you somewhat get a little bit of practice on this, you will be okay for this, but to me, though, I'm just basically now suck at this game now, because, well, again, it's just that the actual movement on Toad itself, although I understand because of how the fact that this is the first ever Toad game he's ever got, but, um, most of the time, though, I just don't think this this game was aged very well, in my opinion, because, well, it's just that the actual controls themselves, and don't get me started on stage 6 and 8, god, I just really, not only can I even just manage to stand out this music, but it's also the stage itself, too, because, for the love of god, if I was trying to get the gold stars on that stage, it could took forever to able to actually figure this out, and, uh, what if I managed to play this on the other day, and just trying to able to, just trying to, goddamn trying to able to success for this part, it took me, and I crap you not, it, it did took me about 30 attempts, oh, god dang it. But even then, though, aside from that, though, we're actually getting quite close towards the end, though, so at least that's the only good thing I can able to must confess about this at this point, so... But luckily, though, if you manage to able to create the gem, you should be okay, but, uh, just be careful if Warrior doesn't do stupid, such as, like, uh, you know, respawning some of these exact same creatures as before. But, uh, believe me when I say this, Warrior is easily the most, uh, 
you know, douchebag. Well, I hate to say for this particular point, for this point, folks, because of how the fact that, well, it just gets really stupidly stingy when it comes to able to actually giving you opportunities to able to get yourselves to Rainbow Star runs like this, and generally you get the gist of it, though. I'm sure many people seem to love this game back to back in the day, but of course this game also came out on the forms of, uh, well, would say on the Super Nintendo version, which, uh, I don't know if they actually did manage to fix some of the issues I have with the NES version of the game, because, well, for one thing, I no longer have the original Super Nintendo Entertainment System anymore, so yeah, you probably get the gist of it, though. But luckily for me, though, especially noticeable with the actual successful re uh, recording attempts like such as these, I'm much able to actually get used to with it now, although sure, it might be a little bit too dated now, at least as far as I can tell with certain puzzle games like this, but even then, though, it's just a little bit of a coincidence, most likely, so even then, though, but then, you know, after this has been done, we, I, I will say this for this point, folks, I have to be so harshly about this, but I will never, I repeat, I will never touch that game ever again. Because, well, for one thing, it's because, of course, the controls themselves is so, so stiff to me, though. And, yeah, it did took me a lot of tries on my, uh, recording attempts for that part. So that pretty much take care of th that pretty much take care of the forms of Warriors Woods, thank goodness for that. I know some people seem to enjoy the game, I don't. I don't see there's so much more appealing to it. Although it is cool to able to see Toad gets his own game or something like that, able to play as him. But I just prefer when uh hopefully when it gets to the point until Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, which it did already came out on all three versions of the game right now, on the Wii U, Nintendo Switch, and the Nintendo 3DS. At least they did offer us to get able to actually give us a 3D platformer for once, not just some sort of a puzzle game again, so... But, yeah, at least as far as I can say about that, easier said than done. Alright, so here we go folks, on 2D forms of uh, Remake's two set of stages, and basically, I seem to lost count of how much stages I have not got the Rainbow Stars on. I do notice the fact that on the first stage, or in this case, stage number 6, is the fact that it did at least, it doesn't take me that long but to able to actually complete it, but the second stage does give me a lot of hard time for some reason, just because obviously it's ice-themed level, and of course this is all ice physics most of the time, so you really need to get used to with the ice physics at times, so yeah, that's as far as I can go for that part. So stage number 8 is, is the fact that, well, we need to go all the way down to the bottom without taking any damage. Now here's the thing I just want to point things out right away for this point, folks. Hit right, because if you hit to the left, well, you occasionally get yourselves blocked by certain progressions, so... That's the thing I never do on that, uh, you know, the first attempt on this run, so even then, though, that, uh, at least I finally managed to discover for this for myself, so even then, though, at least I'm glad that I managed to figure this out, so... Now let's move on to probably the luck-based, uh, event, or this case, in my honest opinion, the most luck-based, uh, mission objective in the whole entire game, and that was, of course, the throwing these bombs and defeat all the enemies. Now, it's pretty obvious that you do need to use bombs in order to actually defeat those porcupines or these hedgehogs or whatever, but, uh, unfortunately, though, you can't able to kill them when you're trying to pick up them, because, obviously, they have, uh, porcupines on their back, so, yeah, that can be pretty prickly at points. And now on to the final stage in Remix 2, where basically we need to get all the way up to the goal while playing as, uh, well, Kid Icarus, obviously. I think the best strategy for this is, is the fact that originally those clouds were supposed to be solid platforms, but turns out you can able to actually bypass them. Well, at least you can able to actually jump right onto the actual clouds. You know, kind of like how it did on that, uh, the Sky World uh, level on Super Smash Bros. Brawl, and even especially knows to play in one of those stages in uh, the Subspace Emissary mode, which even then, though, I must admit, though, right away, I, I totally forgot about that, up until now anyway, though, but even then, though, at least if you manage to accomplish that, then you will be as well able to do his thing with no sweat whatsoever, so I think that pretty much takes care of Remake's two set of stages now. So even then, allow us move on to the last category at the moment for the sake of this video. And this one might be a little bit tough to able to actually achieve the Rainbow Star Stars on, in my opinion. Because, well, as you can see on screen, we are playing Dr. Mario. And this is actually the final time we are going to be doing the challenges like this. Well, again, I said this before, we're not going to see uh, Dr. Mario for final time just yet, though. But until when it gets to the point until the, uh, the extra stuff has been coming in. So even then, though... What makes this a little bit tricky to get the Rainbow Stars in this stage sometimes is the fact that, again, you need to be dead on with the actual, uh, the capsule, uh, dropping down system, and, um, as a result, though, 
well, as long as you're able to actually continuously do it with the combos or anything like that. But in, at least in this case, in this stage in particular, you need to annihilate all the moving viruses. And uh, I think that takes care of every single of those Dr. Mario stages. So even then though, well, at least as far as the actual, uh, the first stage, we have not got Rainbow Stars on. So even then though, we're actually getting pretty close towards at the, uh, at the very end of this bar part on that specific, uh, you know, getting this next stamp or something. So even then, uh, yeah, as far as I can see about this as we'll go. And of course, we're actually on to stage number 9, which is definitely buddy forms of some sort of, uh, I will say at the end of the day, I will say is that Ice Hockey was actually just one of my second worst NES games I've ever, ever played of. Although, sure it's cool back in the day, don't get me wrong. But it's just that I just found it's very, very stiff and archaic. So even then, though, that's, uh, oh wow, I actually got that very lucky right there. Because even then, if you score it well enough, if you do it fast enough, then you should be able to get the Rainbow Star on that specific stage. So even then, though, it took me about less than 10 seconds or less. So, yeah, it's not too bad, though, but it takes a lot of practice, even though it's a little bit archaic at some points. So you probably get the idea. So it's on to the final stage on the forms of not only for the sake of the bonus category, but it's also at the moment right now, is the Rainbow Stars run, uh, you know, the Rainbow Stars run. So even then though, once that's been done, well, you might be thinking that we are totally done with this. Well, it turns out there is actually one last NES game we're like to able to go through, and that is of course, um, NES, uh, NES Open Tournament Golf, which is basically, as far as I can tell, well, I will explain more details onto that, uh, specific game and during it this Friday. So even then, I just want to point things out right away. So even then, I will save that until that day comes. So... So as far as the Rainbow Star attempt on that specific stage alone, it's fine for the most part though, up until stage 4, which as you can see right there, because even then, especially when you're trying to, uh, you know, fight against with, uh, claw grip sometimes, because even then, I swear to god, the actual, uh, timing patterns, even with the actual jumping animation for Link, it just feels kind of, well, there for the most part, because, well, sometimes I easily get myself wrecked by the forms of that specific ball of chain, but most of the time, though, you're easily gonna get yourselves hit a lot of times to this little tough guy, as you as you can see. But if you manage to aim this little pointy thing, or this little sword stabbing at him right well enough, then you will be okay. But until stage 5, where I still managed to get hit by that sledge bro for some reason, because... I was pretty much used to a speed run for this particular stuff back then, but not anymore though, because even then though, well, it's good It's good for speed running if you really want to go after the Rainbow Stars department, but hey, at least that's pretty much something, so even then. And that, as far as I can say, when it comes to the forms of this video, folks, it's just about the fact that I'm going to show you guys the successful attempts on the actual Rainbow Star runs on any other stages for this matter, and so far so good about the fact that since this is all in all the only the only part of the Rainbow Stars run we've ever done, because unlike in NES Remix 1, as I said before, uh, I believe Mario usually took about like uh, three videos to able to actually go through Rainbow Stars routes and all that stuff, because even then, I will assume that um, NES Remix 1 did manage to have the insane amount of challenges as far as I'm concerned. And whilst in NES Remix 2, it doesn't seem to have that much challenges to begin with, I'll to be honest with you. But even then, though, that, uh, I think this is probably because of how the fact that, well, I was, I was expecting that to have the fact that NES Remix 3 might be the case, but uh, it doesn't seem to able to have that much favors or something. Well, at least as far as I can go for that part. So even then though, here's the actual uh, final boss once again in Kirby's Adventure. So even then though, once you're able to deal with all seven of those uh, sections in the fastest time possible, then you would guarantee you can get yourselves the forms of, of course, not only for the sake of three stars, but a nice glorious rainbow stars to top it off. So, yeah, it's a pretty nice flawless run, I have to say, for this matter. Sure, it does take me plenty of tries in draining off screen, but afterwards, though, we get ourselves a nice gold frame as well as the nice little rainbow banner, well, at least as far as the actual outline at the moment. So, yeah, I guess we'll be able to actually end things off here, I'm afraid, guys. So join us next, or join me next time, rapper. Because I keep on thinking of Super Mario Party for some reason. So anyways, join me next time, or let's play NES Remix 2. Here's the fact that we are taking on to the forms of the final NES game we'd like to tackle through. Let's open Tournament Golf. So yeah, see you guys next time. Later, fellas.